You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Really happy to have you here today. We're going over our Total Wellness Tuesday show on the four supplements to boost brain power. But at the same time, we're going to talk about four different areas as well that also lead to neural degeneration in the brain, and they lead to dementia, and they lead to short-term memory loss. They lead to that kind of cloudy thinking as well as Alzheimer's. So we're really talking about all of those things today. And the nice thing is there's essentially a pattern, a pattern that creates all of those things within the brain. And the issue is that insulin or blood sugar desensitivity, which means spikes in blood sugar, are going to cause those issues. High levels of cortisol are going to cause those issues. Okay, So the stress hormone cortisol can actually burn out brain cells as well as something we call the neural synapses. These are basically neurons that are connected, and those connections can actually shrivel as well as deteriorate. Okay, that's really, really important to look at. We're looking at inflammation as a whole. That's kind of a byproduct of these other things going on. And we're looking at toxins that pass the blood-brain barrier, such as heavy metals like aluminum, that can then actually cause what we call oxidation in the brain. They cause, it's almost like rusting of the brain. They can create actual tissue damage, and we can start to see this thing called amyloid plaque or beta amyloid actually start to collect on the brain. So what we're looking at is really a systemic-based plan where we're saying all of these things like improper blood sugar, high levels of cortisol, inflammation and toxins that are in our body as well, so they affect our body, but those same things also affect our brain. Now, the interesting thing is this. It's difficult to test how they're affecting the brain, but it's easy to test how they're affecting the body. So that's the nice thing. If it's in the body, it's most likely affecting the brain. And the problem with the brain is that it doesn't happen all at once. It happens in your teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. You get the point, right? It happens as we age. And people are like, oh, it just, it snuck up on me. All of a sudden, I started losing my memory or... I started to be diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or any one of these things. Well, I can tell you this, it didn't happen overnight and it definitely didn't happen over just the last 10 years. It's happening every year of our life. Many reasons for that. One is our stress pattern. As we get stressed, if we have no outlet, if we can't control that stress, it will burn out our nervous system and our brain. They're intimately connected, right? Your spinal column is your nerves. They come, all your nerves come off of that. And that spinal column is connected directly to your brain. Same with blood sugar. If your blood sugar is erratic and it's been erratic for weeks and months and years and decades, it's going to affect the brain as well. Toxicity. We're exposed to 77,000 plus man-made environmental chemicals. These are man-made ones. These aren't even like the other <laughs> organic chemicals that we might get, right? Too much arsenic or something like that. These are literally pesticides, dioxins, food coloring, all these things that we get in our products that we consider normal. The reason we consider it normal is because we never second guess it. So when our drink is neon green or it's bright red, and that's certainly not, you know, beet juice, we don't think anything about it, but we're swallowing paint. We're literally swallowing all the different red dyes. Same with the yellow. Okay, well, how do we make yellow? We're looking at the different dyes in that as well. So keep in mind, like in our toothpaste, in our shampoo, and again, all these things will be listed in my new book, but I want you to start thinking now, this doesn't make sense. All these man-made chemicals, our body, our liver, wasn't meant to deal with this. And so why is detoxing so important? Well, it's part of the overall picture. You walk outside, you can't escape it. I live in the city. I live in Boston. I walk outside. I live a healthy life. I really do try to. But I'm walking by the train, the buses, brake dust, all these things are in the air. I can't see them necessarily. Sometimes I can. It doesn't mean I can even avoid it. 
I can put my jacket over my mouth. It's not going to block all of it, right? I travel on planes. It's covered in flame retardants. I'm getting all the processed air, the sprays that they put in there. What I'm trying to say is we're exposed to these things all the time. And yes, they're affecting our body, which we mainly feel, but eventually they affect our brain. And so what I want to do is I want to share with you today. I've given you some ways already to think about it, but I want to share with you some lab tests. I want to share with you some supplements. I want to share with you things that we can do realistically. I don't want to get unrealistic. I don't want to give you things that are just simply not possible. Like people saying, you know, just don't eat for a week and all of these things. Like I'm not even saying that that might not be, you know, the right advice for some people, but it's not realistic. So as a naturopathic doctor, I also want to be realistic. I I live in the real world and, you know, I have my own family and I have my own practice. I see all these things. So what I give to you is an actual realistic clinical perspective, as well as a human perspective where if I'm not going to do it myself, I'm certainly not going to ask you to do it. Like that's the bottom line. Okay. So let's go over that today. There are four supplements which can have tremendous benefit on your body and brain. And so I'm just going to give you four, because again, there are a lot. But one of the big ones that a lot of people are starting to become familiar with is called ashwagandha. This is a tremendous supplement that is used, has been used in Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years, thousands and thousands of years, because they've known that this very simple plant has allowed people to control what's called your HPA axis. That's your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. So a lot of people think ashwagandha is great for the adrenals. And it is, but it doesn't necessarily affect the adrenals. It affects the axis, which turns on epinephrine or adrenaline, as well as cortisol, which is also called glucocorticoids. So here's the thing. If it's telling your stress response, hey, don't be as stressed, then what's happening then is that your adrenal glands, the adrenal medulla, as well as the adrenal cortex, so that's the two parts of your adrenal, do not have to output as much adrenaline and as much cortisol. And so if you're not producing as many of those stress hormones, well, guess what? There's less cortisol to actually burn out your nervous system and your brain. And what do I mean by nervous system? This, I'm talking about the sympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight. That's how it essentially wears out the body, all right? But it also burns out the brain. That's it. I mean, when you think about cortisol, Think about running really hot. And when you're producing this type of steam or heat, like think about like the the cartoon of the person who gets really upset and their head gets all red and the steam starts coming out. Like think of that as high cortisol. It's just burning through your body. So we need to get an outlet. We need to just shake that off of our body. We need to also then be able to, in the future, control our thought process around stress. We'll save that for another Mindset and Motivation Monday show. Hopefully you did tune in yesterday. We talked a little bit about overall getting down the path that you want in life, getting off the path of of frustration, getting off the path of stress and getting back onto the path of fulfillment, a purpose of happiness. So definitely tune into that show. But today what I want to say is this plant we call ashwagandha is something that could benefit a lot of other people or a lot of people in general. And so how I'd like to talk about this is this, is that you can actually use a product called Cortisol Manager. Cortisol Manager is fantastic to take two capsules about 30 minutes before bed. They're actually tablets. So it's called Cortisol Manager. I'll link it up in today's show notes. So simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and then go to today's show. I believe today's show is 606. I apologize. I actually don't have today's show right in front of me, but I believe today's show is 606. But again, don't quote me on that. You can go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and simply tune into today's show that says the four supplements to boost brain power. Okay, so Cortisol Manager is a fantastic product. It has both ashwagandha as well as this product called phosphatidylserine. Easier to say than spell. And so this product, both of these products have literally been clinically studied to lower cortisol, which in turn, of course, has been shown to help with Alzheimer's and dementia and brain-based issues. So I feel really comfortable recommending that product to you. The only people who may not use this is someone with really low cortisol output in general. How do you find out how much cortisol you're putting out throughout the day? You do something called the adrenal and hormone stress test. So we'll link that up in today's show notes as well. Every product to talk about today, every lab I talk about today, everything I talk about today, simply go to today's show notes. Again, stevencabral.com forward slash podcast, or we're guessing here, stevencabral.com forward slash 606. So... Here's the deal. 
this test is so simple. You literally spit into these four tubes, small tubes, four times a day. Once you do it in the morning upon waking, another time before lunch, you can just put it back in your pocket at work. Another time around four o'clock, put it back in your pocket. And then one before bed. It will tell you throughout the day how much cortisol you're producing. Too high, too low, or enough. But then you might be lacking the DHEA, the testosterone, the progesterone. Or you might have too higher levels of estrogen that we call estrogen dominance. This is a phenomenal test and I can't recommend it enough. So the other product besides using cortisol manager at night, you could, if you wanted to, opt to also use a product called HPA Adapt, actually by the same company. Again, these aren't our companies, just a fan of the product. So I'm going to recommend any products in the world, even if they're not mine, because my goal is to give you the best of the best. And right now, these are better than I have. So that's the bottom line. I'm going to give you the best. So this is a good overall one that's actually called HPA Adapt. Funny, right? It's actually called what it does. It helps your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal system adapt to stress. So that's a great one. You can take two with breakfast and you can take two with dinner. It has ashwagandha. Great, great product. Gives you 300 milligrams for the day, but it also gives you other things as well, such as maca, eleuthero, and holy basil. All of those as well not only give you energy, but they help you calm the body down in times of stress. Love those products. I will Again, I will link them up in the show notes. Really good for lowering cortisol and also just regulating a cortisol, meaning like you don't want it too low, but you don't want it too high. And that's what HP Adapta does. All right. The next one, crucial, very crucial. Why? Well, it helps over 200 different processes in your body. So what vitamin D3 does is it allows everything else in your body to work well. It's a vitamin, but it also acts as a hormone. It helps with serotonin production, which boosts your neurotransmitter that helps you feel happy. And if you feel more happy, well, then guess what? Synergistically, it also helps lower cortisol. So again, all of this works together. So then it's not going to burn out the brain to the same degree. It helps with assimilation into the red blood cells of other things like calcium and magnesium and vitamin K and all those great things. So again, we need vitamin D. The problem is we don't always know how much we're supposed to get. So you have to do a lab test for this. It's a simple blood lab test. I can link it up in today's show notes. You look at 25 hydroxy vitamin D. You want your vitamin D levels to be 50 to 70 nanograms per milliliter. That shows up as NG forward slash ML. Nanograms per milliliter, okay? It's just fancy talk for the range of 50 to 70. Now, your blood labs will most likely say you're okay between 30 and 100. It's not true. Yes, you're okay, but it's not optimal. What we care about in functional medicine is optimal, not okay. We want optimal because it's not okay to get Alzheimer's when you're 69 years old. That's not okay. It's not okay to get dementia in your late 50s. None of these things are okay. So we don't want okay. We want optimal, all right? So highly recommend that. It's the only way you find out what your vitamin D levels are. It's not that expensive a test. We'll link it up in the show notes. How do you know then how much to take? Well, with us, we'll actually tell you how much to take, but you could also just take 35 IUs of vitamin D per pound of body weight. So take out your calculator, hopefully not while driving, and say 35 times 150 pounds or however much you weigh, okay? You'll do the math. For adults, let me save you the mystery. For adults, it's going to be for most people between 4,000 and 5,000 IUs per day. Pretty simple. When do you use it? Well, you use it when your vitamin D levels are low, even during the summer. I lab test everyone for vitamin D, and what I find is this. Most people, meaning like at least 80% of the population, even during the summer, they have low vitamin D. Why? Because they're not in the sun every day during the summer. They're in the sun maybe once or twice, like on the weekend, and they're not getting a full body tan. When you're outside, you're getting like your arms and like from your knees down tanned. That's not whole body vitamin D, or they have an absorption-based issue. So we help with that. In my practice, most people get about 4,000 IUs during the winter. So they take two capsules of the um, 2,000 IU. They take them at breakfast or lunch or spread them out. And that's in addition to their daily nutritional support shake. Their daily nutritional support shake also provides some vitamin D. So that's why. So really, really helpful. Huge fan of that. And again, it's anti-cancer. It's brain boosting. It's everything. We need our vitamin D. We'll put it that way. Okay. The next one, the next supplement that's huge. I know you've heard about this one before, but I want to give you some context behind it. Vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is so important for so many different reasons. One of the reasons is this. At least one third of the population we're finding out has a methylation defect. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means in their genetics, they have what's called this methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme issue. Okay, what is that? It's MTHFR. Maybe you've heard of that. You don't need to know how to spell it. You don't need any of these things. But what it means is that you're more prone to detox issues. You're more prone to inflammation. You're more prone to higher levels of homocysteine 
on a lab test, which affects your cardiovascular system, which is also going to affect your brain. So here's the thing. Natural folate, nature folate or 5-MTHF folate, all the different natural kinds, basically a methylated folate. If you use this, if you use your B12, you're going to help with these MTHFR-based issues. Now, you don't need to go overboard because even if you have this MTHFR issue like I do, I don't go overboard because I'm lab testing. I'm looking at my homocysteine on my lab test, and it has been high before. And during those times, well, I say, okay, well, what's different? What am I doing different that's causing this inflammation? And then I'm more apt to also include a little bit more of my liquid B12. That's in addition to my daily, my activated B-complex. I take one capsule of activated B-complex, yes, every single day at breakfast. And the reason I do that is to give my body a boost of energy. It's called the anti-stress vitamin. It's very inexpensive, and it helps me with this whole overall inflammatory-based process. Whether that's right for you or not, that depends on what you're looking at in terms of, of lab tests. But I just know for me, I want to make sure that I don't have low levels of B vitamins. Now, again, you can run an organic acids test. We've talked about the organic acids test in the past for candida, bacterial overgrowth, looking at your mitochondrial function in terms of energy, looking at detox. But you may not know, this is 75 biomarkers, and it actually shows your B vitamins as well. It's an incredible test, an incredible test. I've run it once a year for myself. So I'm good, you know, like everything's good, but it shows methylmalonic acid. So B12 on a blood test doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter at all. It just shows me what's available. I want to know what was used. So on a blood test, you can run methylmalonic acid if you ask your doctor, but they usually never run that because they don't know to run it unless you have a really good functional medicine doctor or naturopathic doctor. But the bottom line is you can run it with an organic acid test. You can look at your methylmalonic acid, which is just used up B12. That's the end product. So I like to look at that. And the research shows, really, the research shows that those people with low vitamin B12 are four times more likely to have Alzheimer's. Four times. It's enormous. And again, these are things in the JAMA, so the JAMA of Psychiatry, which is just a journal for medical professionals. When we're looking at these things, we can look at lower B12 and atrophy in the brain. So very important. Now, if someone's older, they're worried about Alzheimer's, they can, they can start taking 1,000 micrograms a day of B12. Sublingual form is great. I like the liquid form, but again, that's just me. That's in addition to regular B vitamins. You can use it just in addition to your daily nutritional support shake if you want. But also, just for maintenance-based use, really getting in around at least 200 micrograms a day, I believe is really important. You're going to get that in, in your activated B complex and a lot of other ones. And then you'll want a blood test, look at your homocysteine, and maybe even run the organic acids test for those B vitamin levels as well. So big fan of that, big fan of, of helping to also work on detox so that you're getting some of these toxins out of the brain and body as well. Okay. So again, they might be coming into your body, but if your liver is not working well enough, which is of course why we recommend the quarterly Dr. Ball detoxes, this is not marketing. This is not a game. This is what we have to contend with. You tell me that there aren't 77,000 man-made toxins in the environment. I say, great, we don't need to do as many toxins. But I can tell you, thousands of years ago, they were still doing detoxes. They were still taking time off from eating. They were still doing their hot and cold. They were still doing their saunas. They were still doing fasting. Why were they doing all these things? Because your body produces its own toxins as well. They know it produces the cortisol. They know it produces its own endotoxins from within the body as well. It's just, it's part of life. Once we accept it, we're good with it, we can move on. It could just be part of our lifestyle. Okay, one more I want to get through. I did a whole, well, I didn't do a whole show on it, but hopefully you tuned in last Friday to the five foods right now that I'm using as actual supplements. So I'm using certain foods. You have to check out that show. It was one of my favorites. I love sharing these little things with you. But one of them was turmeric or curcumin. Some people pronounce it turmeric. However you want to pronounce it, totally fine. When I was in India, they pronounced it as turmeric, so I'm going to go with turmeric, okay? So, but we're looking at the active curcuminoids. We're looking at curcumin in it. And I was sharing with you that 10 years ago, I was using this just with black pepper. And then five years ago, I was using a different version, which was more absorbable, 27 times more absorbable. And then two years ago, I was using the Mariva brand, which was just, it was like another 10% more absorbable. And now today we have a product that allows us to only take one or two capsules a day instead of six or eight. Even though people say serving size one or two, you really needed 10 years ago, if it just has black pepper, six to eight capsules to get your benefit. But now it's just one or two capsules, about 500 or 600 milligrams a day. So important. You get that, you do the 500 milligrams or so once or twice a day, you get this massive, massive decrease in inflammation. 
really, we've got these research of the Ohio State University. Uh, we've got them out of the Nutritional Journal. We've got it in so many different places that I've talked about before that it is called a neuroprotective plant-based supplement. We call it neuroprotective because in the beginning of the show, I started to talk about neural synapses and neurons in the brain. It's what allows for thoughts and, and for different transmission through the brain, like it's electricity up there. And curcumin, since it's a powerful anti-inflammatory, a lot of people don't know too, but turmeric also, also, also helps with detoxification. So it has many properties that we're actually just learning about, but we know for sure it is a natural anti-inflammatory or balances healthy levels of inflammation, as we like to say. So while it does that, it's also, again, helping to clear out those toxins. I'll take it both. I'll take both. I'll take everything that it's good for. Really, really simple. Now, one thing is it's difficult. You can't really test to see what your turmeric levels are, right? So we don't look at that. We look at just blood work overall. How well are you detoxifying? What's your cholesterol levels like? What are your homocysteine levels like? What are your CRP levels like? We look at vitamin D. We look at all the inflammation-based markers. And we want to say, whoa, there's inflammation overload. Why don't we use curcumin for 12 weeks? I think that makes sense. Or if you're in your 50s, 60s, maybe start using it ongoing. You know, the curcumin product that I recommend right now is expensive. There's no doubt about it. It is. It's about $3 a day. $3 a day as a neuroprotective supplement, a pretty good deal in my opinion. However, you could also just space it out and make that last a little longer. It takes it down to $1.50 a day. Why do I recommend this product even though it's about $3 a day? The reason is you still have to pay that same amount of money with other nutritional supplements. Don't get me wrong. This product's not more expensive than the others. They just put it in one bottle that's actually absorbable. Meaning like if you buy a type from your favorite grocery food store, I'm not going to name anyone, but your favorite grocery food store, and it says, oh, you're getting curcumin with bioperine or you're getting curcumin with black pepper, any one of these things. Great. But just know that you need to take about six to eight capsules of that a day. You need to take about three to four grams of that a day, not 500 milligrams, because it's not going to get absorbed as well. So the old studies showed that it took three to four grams for the anti-cancer, for the brain protective qualities. Now it takes 500 milligrams. And hopefully you tuned in last Friday's show where I was sharing that. But how do you get that? Well, you get it with a more absorbable product. And two years from now, we'll probably have something even more absorbable. That's a great thing. So none of these products are bad. Just know that as technology changes, we can get more nutrition out of the foods that we already know are good for us. So again, you can buy three or four bottles of the other stuff that's $30 a month, or you can buy one bottle of the stuff that's, again, it's all in how you want to look for it. And maybe it's out of your price range. That's okay. You don't have to do everything. It's one thing, right? But if you can use it and you can afford it, it's a great product. It's not the only product. So what I'm saying is you're not going to miss out if you do this, but because you can be healthy in other ways. But if you can do it, if you can afford it, I want to share it with you because we know it's been proven by science to help. So it's my job to simply give you the information. What you do with that information now, two weeks from now, a month from now, hopefully not too long from now, that you begin to act on it for what works for you in your life right now. That's what I'm trying to do for you is just give you the best of the best. The same stuff that I want in my life, that I want for my family, that I want for everyone in my practice, and that includes you as well. You're part of this community. I'm telling you right now, if you've left a review on Amazon, I've read it. I really appreciate it. If you're part of the CabralSupportGroup.com, our free Facebook group, you know, I want to interact with you. If you share this podcast with anyone that you believe it can help, I'm telling you right now, those people come on board. We get more feedback. We get more people just really loving to live that healthier life. And that's what it's all about. And it doesn't happen today. It doesn't happen tomorrow. It doesn't happen next month. We're all on this journey. I get healthier as the years passed. There's a reason why I say I feel better today. I have more energy today. I'm happier today than I ever have been before in my life. Ever. And it shouldn't happen that way, right? We're told we're supposed to decline. There's no decline here. I feel better every year, but I'm on that path. I'm growing. I know I'm not even there yet. I'm not. Every day I work at it. That's the bottom line. And that's all I want from you. Just one step each and every day, one step forward. So thank you everyone for tuning into this Cabral Concept. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you. And I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com 
forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.